I have with me a man who loves America and is truly celebrating White History Month, Claston Bernard. And I've had him on before. He's back. He's a, a quickly becoming a good friend. He loved my uh, and, and appreciate what we're doing with the nonprofit organization Bond, the Brotherhood Organization of a New Destiny. We have been rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man for the last 27 years. Um, he was at the he and his father was at our ninth annual men's conference this past June, and it was amazing. Claston is also an author. He has, I mean, amazing books. We're going to tell you how to get them. He's a track and field Olympian. And support, as I said, he's a great supporter of the show. Claston, welcome to the show, sir. Oh, thank you, Jesse. Thank you very much for having me. How was your 4th of July? It was good. We got to see fireworks. My baby girls enjoyed it. Oh, good. That's fun for me. I heard uh, fireworks yesterday or late last night, and it sounded like I was in Iraq. (laughs) <laughs> it was like <laughs> it was like bombs were going off. I mean, and it was coming from the east side of Los Angeles, South Central. I thought they were having a war over there, man. It was so crazy. It's interesting that you said that because my wife said the same thing to me yesterday when we were watching the fireworks um, yeah. by the USS Skid. You know, so it was like, wow. <laughs> it's supposed to be illegal to fire off fireworks within the city limit. You have to go to the beach or some designated area, but no one paid attention to that law last night, it seems. Well, the same same here. You know, outside my house, I could still hear it. <laughs> yeah, but it was crazy. So, White History Month, what do you think of White History Month? Well, well I'll tell you what. You know, if you, if you want to be honest about America, you have to be honest about all who contributed. Yeah. And um, white Americans were very integral in, in, in where America is today. And um, for me, you know, one of the topics that we'll be talking about is John Locke. He is an English philosopher born in 1632. And he's the inspiration behind the American Revolution, the Declaration of Independence, and the U.S. Constitution. And he, Yeah, go ahead. Tell us about him. With with him, he's big on rights, natural rights. You know, we always hear about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And um, that's where Thomas Jefferson got that phrase from. That's who inspired him for that. He talked about life liberty, and property. Life should be respected. No one should impede or infringe on your rights. Um, No one should um, be imprisoned unjustly. And um, you should be able to use your body and work whatever is on the land to to provide for yourself and your family. So, you know, we hear that all the time, but a lot of times we don't really know where this is coming from. But this guy was very instrumental in, 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 in setting things in motion for what is now today America. Yeah, he was uh, a very, very important guy. A lot of people, I asked some people about him yesterday uh, because I knew he was going to talk about him today. A lot of people don't have any idea who he was. And that's amazing. You know, when I started digging into the U.S. Constitution and um, I had his books and I started seeing a lot of similarities and then I started seeing the links. He was instrumental to the American Revolution because he wrote about when government become tyrannical, you should overthrow them. And that's why he's also a big supporter, or proponent of the Second Amendment, because you cannot overthrow government with bow, bows or knives or rocks. Yeah, you have to have, you have to, have, you have to be equipped to overthrow the government. And um, people miss that because the government is by we the people. So he is the inspiration behind what is today the America behind the revolution. You, that idea of we the people is not we the government has been lost now. And the average American don't think of we the people instead of we the government. They don't realize that the government worked for us and we should we can fire them whenever we want to. And I think that's one of the reasons besides the country becoming so immoral. I think that's one of the reasons that the government is so out of control because they control us. We don't control them. And that's that's the biggest mistake, because even when you look at the precursor to, you know, to end in slavery. And again, John Locke talked about natural rights. Those should not be impeded. We we are consenting. We are giving you our some of our liberties in the hopes that you will protect us. That is the premise behind life, liberty and and pursuit of happiness. And when we when the government is now our God, like I write about in my book, um, Outcast, 
then it becomes dangerous. Now they're trying to control us versus us um, it, versus them working for us. And that's that's problematic. Where did John uh, Lott stand when it came to freedom of religion? Well, he, he wrote about religious toleration again. Um, he believed even if we have the true religion, it is not our goal. Um, we should not be compelling people to see the truth because that is God's res responsibility. And there was a big split between um, the, the Protestant movement in England and the Catholic Church. And he wrote that um, we should be able to tolerate each other. Pluralistic, we, you know, pluralistic society is best for a religion to thrive in. So he was the one who came up with, again, free speech and separation of church. The, the, the government should be respectful of our religious belief and not the other way around. Yes. It's so amazing. Um, <clears throat> I just heard a news story this morning. I'm not sure which so-called religion it was. They are now discussing if God was a man or a woman. And uh, this particular religion, we have to I'll find out what it is. They, if, they, if they decide that God was a woman, they're going to rewrite uh their Bible or whatever book they use. And I find that so amazing. Uh, but the point I want to make is that Christianity is under attack in America. We are a Judeo-Christian nation and Christianity is hated. It is the most hated religion on this side of heaven. John Locke would be pretty disappointed uh, at the attack on Christianity. Yes, well, the guys who wrote the, the, the Constitution said it was written for moral people. Yeah. And um, that, that, that is being lost again in, in, in all this noise and confusion. The, the other thing is this. You can do away with the Bible. His laws are still written on our hearts. Yes. So, you know, um, people need to understand that, that the book don't make us. God made us, and he put his laws in us. Just like when, when you create a computer, you put the programs inside the computer for the computer to work. So irrespective if you, the handbook is lost, people will still figure out how to work the computer. That's and deep. That's, that is so true. And a lot of Christians don't know that the word of God is written upon the heart, uh, word made flesh. They are not aware of that, and it's so unfortunate. It is. It is. Did you know, I read that Lark said children are the parents' responsibility to raise, and they, and they answer to God. Are you familiar <laughs> with that? Yes. I, you know what? That's what your program is about. Yeah. You know, I've heard you say that before. Yeah. When God is moving, he moves on the heart, and he reveals truth. And um, the, the good thing that, you know, as a young, um, young parent with young kids, for us is to learn that early because yeah. they are, we are supposed to care for them. We are supposed to guide them and protect them from danger, but it is God's responsibility for the, for who they come out to be. We are just entrusted. In, um, they're just entrusted in our care. Yes. And, uh, and as such, you know, um, it, <clears throat> you're so right about that. And, uh, but a lot of parents are not protecting their children from evil now. We on my uh, the Father State TV show, my YouTube. We went out and, and recorded the so-called gay pride parade, and I was shocked at the number of children that was participating in such a gross activity. It was mind blowing. Hold on, let me take a quick break. When I come back, I want you to tell the people a little bit more about you and how to get your books. Okay. 888-7753-773. Back in a moment. Happy uh, White History Month, all of July. Classroom, where are you from? You were not born in America. I hear it in your accent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, they say, um, you know, Cajun Jamaican. I'm from Jamaica. I was born in Jamaica. And do you have three jobs? <laughs> <laughs> I, I work. I work. You know, <laughs> you know, I was all, I was inspired by my dad and, um, you know, he's yeah. just a hard worker and myself. I work, you know, work hard. Right on. I, um, I met your father. Uh, we were talking about children just before the break. I've noticed that Christians don't protect, not all, of course, but don't protect their children from evil. They put them in public schools. They allow their children to be brainwashed in the public school system. They allow the government to give them medication if the kids are hyper as kids are naturally. They allow them to participate in homosexual activities and all kind of abortion stuff. And the kids are not protected. 
Um, and now the liberals want to take transgender kids away from parents who disagree with therapy. You know, for me, um, in my book, you know, I talk about education and I talk about the family in my book. And one of the disturbing thing is this, again, the government is we the people. When the government start taking children away from their parents, that is a violation of our natural rights. Yes. It's also you are trying to put your imprint and God's imprint. And um, that that is disturbing in so many levels. And um, as a country, that should you know, people should be up in arms about this kind of stuff. This should not continue. Yeah. The, the role of the government, and I talk about it in my book, again, if if kids are left to the government, they will become a tool of the government. And so we as parents have to take the, the initiative to make sure that our kids are being protected and are getting what they need. And that's why I advocate for homeschooling, private education, be active. Yeah. The government is just there to help ease your burden, not to fix your problem. And sending your kids to school are not going to fix that problem that you think, you know, you're, uh, that's, that's yeah. you're hoping for. That's right. So, um, <clears throat> Tell the people how to get your books. My book, you can get it on Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, Perkins Road, Baton Rouge, and City Place, Baton Rouge. And so the first book is I Was Born a Winner. What is that about? I know I what it's about, but tell the people. I was born a winner. Basically, as a kid, I was discouraged a lot. You know, when you grow up in, in an impoverished com community, people don't always um, have the best things to say to you when you're aspiring for good things. And I've had to learn to walk through that. Mm -hmm. And um, eventually, Track and Field opened up as a vehicle for me to get where I am today. And I embraced it. And even after embracing it, I, f I kept getting a lot of discouragement. A lot of things were said to me. I, I was laughed at. I was ridiculed. And, um, you know, to, to top that off is to see a guy, like I said, from the Rocky Playground to two Olympic Games, the Commonwealth Gold Medal and NCAA Championship and four um, SEC Championship is showing me that there's a God, there's someone who was directing my step all, all along. And the book basically tie into how I finally came to realize all the things I was chasing from track and field didn't amount to much. It yeah. didn't satisfy me. It didn't give me that completion. And it took me going to Athens um, by the Parthenon to come to that realization that, you know, like Solomon says, it's just vanity. Yeah, and absolutely. Once I came to that realization, it put what I was doing in, prop in the proper perspective and had me focusing on where I needed to focus, which is having a relationship with God. So basically, that's what I Was Born a Winner is about. Outcast basically is about coming to America, realizing that the politics is so divisive. You're, you're being told that the white people are bad for you, but then they, they go ahead and says, you know what, it's the Republicans that hate black people. And um, they muddy the history up and tell you, look, don't, don't, don't listen to them Republicans. You know, they, they, they're hateful. And I had to I had to search and I had to go through the US, U.S. Constitution. And that is where I found my identity. All men are created equal yeah. with unalienable rights, life, liberty and in pursuit of happiness. And that is what outcast is about. You have to see America where it was formed and not where people want you to believe that it is today, because it doesn't change the Constitution. It doesn't change the truth. America is a great place to live. It, there are many opportunities. There are bad people here. There are bad people everywhere. Yeah. But to make America look like they are the most racist country in this world was repulsive to me to hear the media talk about it, to hear Democrats insinuate it or even explicitly talk about it. And um, I, I defer. I, I don't believe in that. Yeah. Um, uh, most black people have been made to believe that the Republican Party is a racist white party that want to put blacks in slave. I believed that for a long time, and it wasn't until I was able to overcome the anger and see that I had been lied to. So how can the people get your books, Outcast, No Room at the Table for Conservative Blacks in America, and uh, I Was Born a Winner? How can people get that again? Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble in Baton Rouge, um, Perkins Row and Barnes & Noble city, city Place in Baton Rouge. And the author, folks, Claston Bernard. And your Twitter is what? 
at Claston B, and I'll also be doing a book signing at City Place Baton Rouge between, at 1 p.m. this Saturday. City Place Baton Rouge this Saturday. What's that date? Um, July 7th. July 7th. Man, it's an honor to know you. Um, I like what you're doing with your family, uh, the way you are there for your wife and kids. I have much respect for your father, and um, you're welcome on the show anytime. I appreciate you. Thank you, man. I really appreciate every opportunity you give you give to me to put the word out there. Yes. One last thing. Um, what do you say to those people who are angry at me for starting July as White History Month? Well, it's always a reflection of what's going on inside of them. Why would you be offended? Yeah. You know, <laughs> you, you, you're, ben you're benefiting from this great country. Yeah. You know, if you if you want to keep it real, then if we we have that many division, why not? white people. That's right. Thank you. Know, you why man. not? Thank you, man. God bless you. Thank you. I appreciate you, Jesse. All right. Have a good day. You too. All right. Happy, happy okay. White History Month.